Hello, my name is Peter Phelps of Phelps 3D, and in this tutorial, I'm going to discuss an add-on that's a Halloween theme to my FreeCAD 3D Printing for Kids book number four, Image to 3D book. So in this one, we're going to download some pictures. I will put all the links to the pictures in the description of this video and then we're going to take those pictures we need to convert those into SVG file format with Inkscape and then we can put those into 3CAD to turn into 3D objects so I'm going to start off Inkscape I've already downloaded all the files that are in a folder on my hard drive Inkscape always takes a little while to load. And just a reminder, I have a web page now at um, phelps3d.co, not com, dot co. Basically, when I did a search for my the dot com, it wasn't there. Someone bought it. <laughs> They prospected it, and so I ended up with .co because it was free from uh, the service provider. I'm with GoDaddy. Um, okay, so I'm going to import. Oh, we don't know. I'm going to start with the cat silhouette. Open. I always say smooth from file and bed. Okay. And I'm probably not going to want it that big. I mean, that will turn out to be huge. Click on that path, trace bitmap, uh, update the preview. I'm just going to say OK. And I can close this. Now, you can see down here where it's got nodes, layer, click on screen to rotate. So, this is the actual trace. This is the bitmap that was the PNG file, so I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to go file. Uh, save. And then go back to Demo. And we're gonna call it. I'm just gonna call it Black Cat. Save and file new. Now, the thing with this is it always starts a whole other instance, so I'll close that one. import. I decided to go with this spider rather than this one because this one will be hopefully a little easier for the printer and I'm not sure how well the red will translate. 
So I'll go ahead and go with the bat for now. Say okay. Okay. Now if I if I got that right, there should not be any yellow. See how there's yellow? If I zoom in. So there's yellow there. Yellow didn't translate, which is fine. You don't need that. Delete this one. Bring this one back up. File, save, and this is the one thing I don't like about this program: is it doesn't remember where you were. the spider here. One of the things about spiders is it's kind of tough for 3D printing is sometimes the legs get a little too thin. Okay, selecting it, path, trace bit path. I like to have the update. I probably could just click the live preview and it would work. Say OK. Cut it. Close that. So remember, the one with the nodes down here is always the one that's the trace. But it will say here if it's an image. So you want to delete the image. You really probably don't have to move that around. I just like putting it up in the corner. Save. Um, sat down beside her and scared poor Miss Muffet away. Okay, so we've done the cat, the spider, that. These I'll mess with something else later. I won't probably use the Directly Frankenstein. Okay. He's already that small, which is okay. Uh, trace bitmap. I like to hit update, say okay. Close. That's that one. I delete it as the delete key. Save. Frankenstein. Okay. I 
with Frankenstein, he looks like he has a hole, so if you wanted to make him into, say, a necklace or something else, you might as well just make that hole bigger. <laughs> um, let's see. Now this one, because he's got eyes that are sort of sticking out there, in the program, in the FreeCAD, we're going to have to add something to connect the eyes to the rest of it in the mouth. I'm just going to say skull all of it has the bones, crossbones. All right, so we'll work with those. Close this, start with free CAD. Mine always starts up in the part design workbench and with a new document. That's just how I have mine set up. But we can go and go to part instead. So most of the work we'll do is in there. So we'll file, import. SVG as geometry. Select. Okay, and we're going to select, click, shift, 
select all three. We're going to go part and say mark make a compound. That makes it all one one trace, one part. Then that can then be click it, extrude, create a solid. And I'm gonna say just three million three. Oops. My one mark wasn't on. Three. Okay. And now instead of just a 2D little sketch, you have a 3D object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first I'm going to see how big this is. Now that's that's pretty big for something that's probably going to be just a pendant or something else. If you're putting this up on a wall, this this is fine. I mean, that's almost 100 millimeters, pretty good size. Um, most of the printer bots and some of the smaller other 3D printers that will fit on their bed, but it's still pretty big if all you're looking for is something like like it's going to be a pendant or something you wear. Or, you could even turn it into earrings if you wanted. So in this case, I'm going to shrink that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete, select the measurement, and delete it. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to go to draft. In draft, I can clone it. I've got it selected. I can click clone. Then what I do is I just hide the original extrude. Then I don't like to have the grid, so I'm going to turn the grid off. I'm going to go back to part, just for because the next part of what I'm doing is going to be in it. But what we're going to do is we're going to scale this. I want it to be about one third that size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. 0.34 um, in the X and the Y. I'm going to leave the Z1. And I'm going to zoom in because I still want it to be 3 millimeters tall. I don't want to change that part of it. And then I'm going to create a torus. And okay, so I'm going to only go one millimeter with the one radius. And I'm going to go down to like four. Anyway. And then I'm going to move that. I look from the top for right now. Actually, maybe I'll go even smaller. Let's go just two. So we want to move this. I want it kind of attached to his head. I want to make sure that it's it should just be touching the bottom. So w when this gets generated, it's usually in the middle. So to see how see how it's going below the object. If we go to the switch, that'd be okay. Let me zoom in. See, it's it's below it. So we need to move it up. What was the radius? Well, you probably want to go 0 0.75. 0 .75. That will put it so the bottom here is resting. That was a simple thing. It's the same as the radius. Duh. 
Okay. So switch back over. Look back at the top. Zoom out. Now, if you ever wonder how I'm doing the, how I do this, where I click, I hold Alt to turn it like this. I can rotate it freehand. Basically, you set that up. Okay. Set that up by right clicking, going to navigation style, and switching to touchpad navigation. It will allow you to hold the Alt click and just rotate. So I'm going to fuse that together the Taurus and the clone. I just control clicked it. I prefer to use this one. I don't use this one very often, but you could. It does the same thing as far as this one. I just I click this one most of the time. Since this one only works on two objects and this one works on as many as you want to select, I just tend to hit this one. <laughs> they both do the same thing. Okay, and so then I'm going to take, I'm going to go file, save, I'll call it Pat Pendant. And go file, export. And if you really wanted to, you could click that and do the draft clone again. I think this one disappear for the moment. Click the clone. And I wouldn't go down too much on the Z. I mean, you could probably go down 0.75. And then zero point five. move that one so that we can see both of them. I'm going to move that negative 20. And I can bring up the other one. You can see both of them. So you can see basically how small it became versus the other one. And I save. Now export that. And instead of pendant, I'll call it earring. Now, one thing you have to be a little bit aware of. The size of these 
eyes here in the in the the holes. They might get so small that the three D printer kind of just fills them in. It depends on the size of your nozzle, etc. So just be aware. Like even these tips might sort of disappear because they might get too thin. It depends on the printer. Okay, and so that's the bat. We're gonna go ahead and start a new one. Um, file import. Let's do the black cat next. As geometry. And like I said before, make them a compound. Extrude. Three. Okay. Make sure you created solid first. And that's okay. And now, how big is this? But we'll probably do is approximately the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna click that. Draft clone. I like that it's <laughs> the Star Wars clone. I wonder how they can get away with that. <laughs> with that Lucas coming after him. And we're going to reduce this by the zero point three four. Probably should have done is kept the other file up. Um, let me open that file back up. So what I want to do is I want to go in and copy the torus, so I'm not having to play around moving it and everything, changing the size. So I'm going to go back into the fusion. Control C. Or here, Control V. And the torus is hidden because it was part of the um, fusion. So I'm going to select the torus and hit space. So I bring it back up. Then I'm going to close the pendant. And where did the torus go? It's probably inside the cat. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Um. Okay, that looks good. Over to part. I selected both of them. Alright, and then we're going to name that black cat. Or just cat. Or just cat.
here with this one, the, the tricky part is how thin does the tail end up getting when you make it smaller. Because it's possible that if it's too small... We can check that. Okay. Okay, so our distance is point seven six blah blah. So hmm. You really would like if if you're using a point four millimeter, you want it to be a little bit bigger than that. That's not gonna have you know, two two things of plastic going there so we're going to make it a little bit bigger how about uh, 0 0.06 0 0.6 I'm sorry Now the bad thing is this: uh, the, the distance doesn't update. It, it's a measurement at the point you were using, so I'm gonna have to delete that measurement and measure again. But you got to be aware of that. Um, if you get too thin, the parts will just disappear. get even smaller. <laughs> Maybe I had different measurement points, but that's still not good. Uh, you really want that to be about 0.8 if you can. <sighs> so let's just do 0 0.75 and see how that comes out. Because what will happen is it will print, but it will it will make the, um, the tail will become separate because they're not the slicer will mess it up. Either that, or you could go in and try to make this thicker before you're doing all this in the image itself. But it, it's hard to tell until you get it in, actually into the program and you start scaling it and messing with it, what, what it's going to be. Now, that's a better distance. That should print fine. That will give it at least one line one way, one line the other. Okay, so now we'll uh, move that. So I can bring the other one back up. Okay. The earring's not that much smaller. <laughs> There's not a whole lot I can do with that. You can make the, you could have made the cat bigger uh, for the pendant. But you're, you're, when you're designing, you have to be aware of the minimums. I mean, even this, okay, where the eye comes up, I may have a problem with that. It may end up making this be a hole when it actually 3D prints, where it won't come together here. It depends on how close together that is. Be aware of those um, and how you might have to scale or change the image to fit it. 
later or scale apart like I'm doing with the clones. Okay, I'm going to save that. File new, file import. And let's see. Frankenstein. That's geometry. Now, I was thinking of making a bigger hole. So what I may do is I may just delete that path. Go to the part, extrude, create solid, free, okay. Now the reason I don't click apply is because it will keep it will make duplicates when you say apply and then you click OK to close this up. It'll have like two of them instead of just one. So I tend to ignore the supply button at all, almost all the time. <laughs> okay. Now let's see. How big is this? Okay, so I'm going to only cut this one in half for the beginning one. So parts go over to draft, clone it, hide the extrude, click the hat, that. And this time I'm going to just go 0 0.5. Okay, and I'm going to go parts. I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to take the cylinder and give it to 1.5 maybe. It doesn't really matter how tall it is. So we're going to be cutting it. Now if you want to make this easier to see, you can change the cylinder's color. Use the view tab, shape color. I'm going to go, well, let's go black. So we're going to cut it but it makes it easier to see when it's not gray on gray since we're doing it from the top and so at 1.5 this is a 3 millimeter diameter hole and I'm not sure we need a loop. You could run the run something right through that hole for the pendant part. But if you want, you can add another torus. It's all up to you. I'm gonna click that, control click the cylinder, and then click the cut button. So now I've made a much bigger hole and it will be easier to put something through that. And Go file, save. Frankenstein. Click cut. Now, if you want to see it in 3D, that's pretty much what it is. And I'll zoom back out a bit. File, export. And again, select draft, clone it, hide it. Um, let's see. How about just half it again?
fat fingers. Tony's not enough. You can always click in here if you have a scroll wheel mouse. Come on. There. That's Of course, you're going to want to print two of those since they're earrings. But file save again. Now you don't have to stick with this circle. If you want, you can create a different one. Actually, what I'm thinking, let's get rid of that. Let's then take and let's go to the part. Part make compound. Compound extrude, create solid, three, okay. That way all we have is the ghost if you want. And if I go control Z and control I control V because the torus is still here in my memory. So we can use that. Um, but we haven't shrank this. We need to shrink this probably. Let's see what size it is. Forty point five. So I'm not going to shrink this much if I'm going to shrink it. Um, I think I'll only shrink it like to eighty percent of what it's at. Or maybe 90. Um, okay, so. Let's see what just 90 does. It's not very big to begin with. We'll leave it there, I guess. Delete that. Um, take the Taurus. Use that. Ooh, scary. <laughs> okay, I'm being a goofball. Uh, file save and ghost. File export. 
selected it. File export. Make sure you have STL. Ghost. And then. And again, we're going to go draft. Chrome that. Hide this one. Now, this is going to be a little tricky since it's already small. Let's just do 0 0.6. Sixty percent, basically. Zero point six. And let's move that. I'm going to move it on the X this time. It's probably easier to go this way. File save, file export, and we'll go, go steerings. Geometry, and what we're going to do is we're going to click the first one, shift, click the last one, and then we'll go part, make compound. That joins it all into one thing. Select it, extrude, create solid. Three. Okay. Now the tricky thing with this one is when you shrink it down for the earring, you might make these teeth things disappear. Depends on the size. Let's see how big is this? Oh, it's already 50. So it's, uh, on this one, it's almost what you want already. Um, I do shrink it, I'm going to only shrink it, I'll say like 95, I'll, I'll switch it to 95% instead of, because it's not very big. Um, okay. And with this one, if you really wanted to, you could probably put a hole up, up top of in the skull part rather than create a, a torus. It depends on what you want. Um, I think I'll add the torus so just because it offsets or it gives it some like, the, like I said here I'm only going to shrink it a little bit in the torus bring it up huh. I think it could be a little smaller.
You're probably wondering, why do I save it twice? Cool. Well, this way if something screws up or messes up, uh, I always, I still have a file to go right back to. You know, that whole mantra, save and save often. <laughs> Definitely do so. And then we're going to take clone that again. Make the original disappear for a bit. And I'm going to do 0 0.6 again. Happens with the Taurus. That's not a good thing. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what. Why did it do that? Seems to have that there before I scaled it. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay. Hmm. It doesn't like that. Either that or it's just not drawing it right. Sometimes there's a memory glitch here and it will just not draw it right, but the only way for me to find out is to, s to scale it, save it open it and close it, open it back up and see what happens. Sometimes it's better if you totally close FreeCAD and start it back up to refresh its memory cache, whatever. So it's not going to like that. Let's uh, delete the clone. What we can do is copy both of those. that and change it to 0 0.6 0 0.6 and I'm going to move it
centered. Okay. So yeah, if something happens like that where you can't figure out <laughs> what happened, you may have to work on it, um, tweak the original parts some, um, and then put it back together. So I'll save that again. Export and then it will be school. Oh, that one should have been pendant, but oh well. Green. And we can close that one. Create a new one. So I think I should have one more file import. It should be the spider, I think. Oh, I forgot the witch, I think. I did want to do the witch too. I can do that in a bit. Okay, there's just one path, so that makes it easy. Extrude that, create solid, free, okay. Big is this totally? Seventy four almost seventy three. So probably going to shrink it about seventy five percent. I'm thinking. So draft. Hide the extrude. Get rid of the grid. I go to part. Uh, the scale is. said uh, 0 0.75 so I'm going with creepy crawly spiders all over the house okay and then I'm gonna paste in whoops oh I forgot we had Just wanted the Taurus. Okay, I forgot I copied and pasted to create that. got to see whether or not this one will have a problem. Let's take that fusion, draft, clone it. Now this is again one of those points where how small can we make it before it won't print? <laughs> because like I said the legs they might get a little small so Let's just do 75% on that one too. Make it even smaller than the original.
terribly smaller, but it's smaller. Okay. Um, file, save, spider. File, export, uh, spider pendant. huge um want to shrink it down oops oh, didn't want to reverse it okay with it selected path trace bitmap New document, back in part, file import, which SVG as geometry, it's two paths, so we're going to do a part compound, make compound, extrude, create a solid, three. Okay, and how big is this? Let's go from this to this. So it'd be okay. I think I'll do seventy-five mil percent. Well, maybe eighty. And I'll go with eighty. The tricky part here is going to be. See these really thin ankles, the, the, the broom itself, even her nose and mouth here, these might disappear in your prints because of how small they are. When you shrink them even further, they'll get even smaller, so they might not show up very good on a print. This may not have been the best overall design, but... It looked interesting to me when I saw it. Even these tips of her shoes are probably going to disappear in the print. You know. <laughs> of course, you could make it even bigger for like a wall hanging or something if you wanted to. If I was doing that, even for the pendant, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is make a hole up in her, I don't know why she has a cape, this one has a cape, <laughs> so I'm probably just going to use a hole in that, so let's see, what was I thinking, I'm going to shrink it 80 
Draft clone zero point eight zero point eight. Now I'm going to check. I think this what, looks like. Ankle is probably one of the thinner parts. Okay, that's still big enough. I'm gonna check this one. That's still big enough. Okay. But when we go to shrink it for the. How much can I shrink it? Say I want point eight differences. So I might be able to shrink it 75% without it going bad, without it getting too small. Okay. Did you s understand what I just did mathematically? I took a target of 0.8 millimeters being the basic minimum of two uh, paths of the 0.4 millimeter filament. And so I took the number that this measured, the 1.1, so I took the, what my target was, the 0.8, and divided it by the 0.1.1 to get a percentage that I could use for the scale. Okay. Delete those. First, to put a hole in it. So, go back to parts. Create a cylinder. I'm going to use the same size I did before 1.5. And I'm going to move the cylinder. I'm going to put a hole there that can be used for the pendant part. Select the extrude clone. Control click the cylinder. Perform a cut. Clone the witch. Like I said, um, I'm only going to scale it zero point seven five. Now her nose may still disappear. <laughs> So I wasn't measuring that distance.
it's not very, very much smaller than that. But I think it's close to the bare minimum of. So I'm going to file save it again. File. Export. So then I would go and open up NetFab. Basic. Yes, I accept. Later. Now I'm just going to check all of them. Part add. There's a problem. It doesn't like something over here. So let's repair it. Automatic repair. Execute. Apply part repair. Move whole part. I always suggest checking the files in NetFab Basic. Export part. SSTL. I just leave it the default name. The repaired. This comes up, I just say optimize and export. Usually it works fine. And then part remove, say so yes, part add. So we did the earring, we did the pendant, it probably will have the same problem. Yep. Repair, automatic repair, execute, apply part repair, remove all part, part. Export part, SSTL, save, optimize, export, part, remove, yes, part, add, cat earring, it has a problem too, repair, automatic repair, execute, apply part, repair, removal part, part, Export part as STL. Yeah. Part remove. Yes. Part add. Pendant. And this one doesn't have a problem. Now they're both based on the same thing. Why is this one okay and the other one not? I don't know. Repair, halt repair, apply repair, rule part, part, export part, SSTL, save, part, remove, yes, part, add. Pendant. It has a problem, okay. Quick repair, automatic repair, execute. Apply part repair, removal part, part, export part, SSTL, save, part, remove, yes, part, add. Ghost. That one has a problem too. Automatic repair, execute. Apply part repair. Rule part, part, export, SSTL, save, part, remove, yes, part, add, ghost pendant, should be, and same thing. 
sorry. I'm just going through it. But you, you see the steps. Part add. Open the skull. Skull earring. I did earring, so the skull, that's the pendant. If you remember right, I didn't name it correctly. I should have put pendant after it. Little part. Part, export part, SSTL, save, part, remove, part, add. Spider, urine. Sonic repair, fly repair, removal part. Part SSTL. Save. Part. Remove. Yes. Part. Add. Now we want the spider pendant. Automatic repair. Execute. Fly repair. Removal part. Part. Export STL. Part. Ooh. Part. Add. I think we're getting close to the end. Almost all of these had some problem. I'm surprised that one didn't. Okay, so we've gone through, we've repaired all of them. These should now all be 3D printable. Now, like I said, some of these, like the, it may make that just disappear when you try to print it. Uh, it may do the same thing to the nose. So you gotta be aware of how small certain parts get before they're printable or not printable. And it all depends on your 3D printer. I'm using as a basis the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and you want to sort of double that to, so that there's two lines. So it will have something to, that's somewhat attachable. But if you have a smaller nozzle on your 3D printer, you're using a riprap that uses, say, a 0.2 nozzle, then you really could probably go down to 0.4 millimeters as far as the size. But you're going to probably have to print much slower than some of the, like, make a box like 90 millimeters I, I know most of the rep wrap work, work I've worked with is like point it's like 60 millimeters a second and sometimes before it just depends on your printer it really does same thing with um, when you're designing this stuff and you're trying to go with like shapeways or something shapeways is minimum thickness is 0.7 millimeters for the plastic the strong and flexible plastic. So you, you just have to be aware when you're designing that you are designing towards a printer and a certain specification as far as uh, minimum thicknesses, minimum wall heights, and thicknesses. Um, so thank you for watching and have a great day.